Good evening. Sports has always played a prominent role in our society, particularly as it relates to bringing young people together from many different ethnic groups. In fact, it may be the first time, oftentimes, where other ethnic groups interact together. Uh, my father saw America as a land of opportunity for everyone. And I believe that sports certainly brings everyone together. Uh, rich, poor, black, white, no matter uh, what your ethnic uh, orientation is, sports is something that we all enjoy on a consistent basis. And in fact, can inspire unity in our nation. All choir students are reminded to go straight to the music room at the end of block one. I have a dream. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! self-evident that all men are created equal. Wake up all the teachers, science to teach a new way. by the content of that character. I have a dream today. Yeah. Yeah. No date line in the American memory carries more history and importance than Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, where Martin Luther King Jr. preached his message of equality and nonviolence. Tomorrow would have been Dr. King's 82nd birthday, and on Monday, America observes a national holiday in his honor for the 25th year. Tonight, in the Horizon Sanctuary of historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, an ESPN Town Hall meeting. Wake up, everybody, no more sleeping in bed. No more back with thinking, time for thinking ahead. Teachers, time to teach a new way. Wake up, everybody. Wake up, everybody. Historic Ebenezer Baptist. Our site tonight for our town meeting. And good evening and welcome to Atlanta, Georgia. Along with Robin Roberts, my good friend from Good Morning America, formerly from Sports Center. Good yeah, to see you. It's good to see you again, All right, I'm Bob Lee. And our conversation tonight about the image of the black athlete, the heroic, the less than heroic, and certainly the differing opinions, sometimes sharply different, between mm -hmm. white and black fans on various topics. African American athletes are front and center when it comes to the NFL, when it comes to the NBA, when it comes to, to college sports, but not so much in baseball. And at a time when there's never been more life-changing money in sports and more media goes along with that more scrutiny the image of the black athlete is one that america confronts often right, joining us tonight in this very historic setting we're so pleased to be here yes. we have some very thoughtful folks to spark our dialogue tonight along with questions from our audience and of course online as well let's meet our folks this evening spike lee is one of this country's most prolific filmmakers he directed the seminal michael jordan nike commercials and yes you can find him courtside in his mid scenes. <laughs> John Calipari. Thanks, I had a spike. After all, he went to school here. Yeah. Yes, he is a Morehouse man. And what is the that? house? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they're in the house tonight. That's it. Sitting next to Spike for the University of Kentucky is John Calipari. In recent successive seasons there and at Memphis, he recruited and coached John Wall, Tariq Evans and Derrick Rose, each an NBA starter after his single college season. And Coach Calipari has a game tomorrow, and yet he is here tonight 
with us, and we appreciate that very much. Coach. Marion Jones played in the WNBA this past season. She won five medals at the Sydney Olympics, but later forfeited them after admitting the use of performance-enhancing drugs. She served six months in prison. She has focused honestly and spoken openly about this, and we are pleased to have her with us this evening. Welcome. When Randy Shannon was hired to coach the Miami Hurricanes in 2006, he brought the number of black head football coaches in Division I to six. He was 28 and 22 in four seasons at his alma mater, and we're very pleased to have him here with us this evening. We're going to be having Jalen Rose joining us shortly, and also Michael Wilbon. He's been pretty busy with Pardon the Interruption, and they're could you believe it's stuck in Atlanta traffic? That never happens, right? <laughs> and with the ice, but we're very glad that you are here with us. So let's get, get it started with the perception of the black athlete. And Spike, nice suit. What is that, velvet? What is that, velvet? <laughs> I like that. I like that. Armani. Oh, there you go. You are a Morehouse man. Let's start with the perception of the black athlete and, and how, how that has evolved since the days of Dr. King, Spike. Well, I think that uh, there has been evolution. I mean, you can't have evolution have an African-American president. I still think that we're stereotyped, and there's a double standard that is applied to African-American athletes. And I, I read recently about this Q score that came out mm -hmm. And it listed the, the, the lowest athletes with the Q score was LeBron, Tiger, Michael Vick, Kobe. I'm missing somebody. And like the first six or seven. The first six were African First six were African American. Right. And so I'm looking at that, and I read the papers, sports papers every day. I'm looking, I'm scratching my beard like, some people are missing. And then I'm thinking about who voted. Because I think that if you were given that same survey or test to African Americans, they, those ones that were the first six, would not have been on that list. Mm -hmm. So I knew right away who, who, who they gave that survey to, survey to. And we're going to be showing a lot of numbers in different surveys, and we do see some differences between how blacks and whites view certain athletes and view certain issues that we would share um, throughout these, these next two hours. But, but, but other than that, Spike, when, when you look at the, the days of Dr. King and the athletes and the way that the, the black athlete was viewed, right. and you, you fast forward to now, what are the differences that change? Well, I think that number one, money. There's a ton of money that these guys make, not just black athletes, athletes, all athletes, compared to the day when owners ruled everything. Now you have athletes who want to, who, who consider themselves brands, who want to someday own teams. Even Michael Jordan, you know, owns mm -hmm. uh, the, the team in Charlotte. So. You still had this conflict, and, and for me, it was so interesting the reaction when LeBron left Cleveland. And, and to me, it had the dynamics of the slave, runaway slave in the plantation. And then, you know, Jesse jumped in, and you had the letter from the Cleveland owner. So I was definitely, you know, bubbling, bubbling to the top, and you know, my man sent that, he says he didn't send that tweet, but. <laughs> oh, about this. <laughs> about karma. You, you, you just got it started. Well, and, but and they have, they do have the worst record in the NBA. And you bring up those, those. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go there, he just couldn't. But you bring up I some very good issues. I don't tend to go to Cleveland anymore, ah, so no, I'm you, all right. You better not. But you bring up some issues about LeBron that we're gonna discuss right. later. 